Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story, The Fairy's New Year Gift, was adapted by Daniel Hines from the original short fable by Emily Poulson. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Fairy's New Year Gift It was New Year's Eve, and downstairs at the Kumar household, the adults were having quite the party. At least, it sounded like it was quite the party. Navya and Darsh, who had early on been banished upstairs to watch movies in their parents' bed, could only listen and wonder. Their imaginations were inflamed by the sounds of laughter and clinking crystal and the occasional resounding pop and gurgle noise of champagne. We should be at the party, said Darsh, throwing himself dramatically onto the bed. It's for the neighbors, said Navya. Mommy and Papa said to stay here and go to sleep. Just relax. How can I relax when people are having fun without me? Before Navya could answer, there was another popping noise. Only this one came from the air in front of them. With a shine and flash, a tiny fairy appeared. She was wearing a long dress swirled white and black, and she was carrying two books nearly as big as she was. Whoa! said Darsh, who was so surprised he tumbled backwards off the bed. He landed in a heap on the rug, arms and legs all entangled. Navya only stared, eyes wide, mouth open in surprise. Hello! said the fairy in a pleasant little voice. I hope I didn't scare you. I'm the fairy of New Year's, and I've been sent by Father Time to deliver you these gifts. Have a happy New Year! She dropped the books onto the bed, flapped her gossamer wings once, and then disappeared. Is is she gone? asked Darsh, peering over the edge of the bed. Navya nodded and picked up one of the books. It was short but thick, with a smooth leather cover. On the front, in golden letters, it read, Darsh Kumar. On the back, in the same golden script, it read, For the New Year. Navya threw the book towards her brother and picked up the second. This one was the same, except it had her name on the front instead of her brother's. What do they say inside? asked Darsh, poking at his book nervously, as though it were a wild animal that might take a bite out of his finger. Navya flipped open the book, hands trembling with excitement, but inside, the creamy white pages were smooth and blank. Nothing! It doesn't say anything! It's all blank! Why would a fairy come and give us blank books? It doesn't make any sense. Navya shrugged and ran her fingers over the golden letters of her name on the cover. A tingle ran down her spine and made her shiver. Goosebumps stood out all along her arms. It doesn't have to make sense. It's magic. Real magic. Darsh nodded and chewed his lip in the way he always did when he was thinking about something that would get them into trouble. I'm going to rip out a page. What? Why would you do that? I want to see what will happen, Darsh said, and then he flipped open his book, grabbed the edge of a page, and pulled. And pulled. And pulled. It won't rip. Duh, it's magic, Navya said, feeling very smug about it. Then a thought occurred to her, one that sent a frown creeping across her lips. We should probably tell Mommy and Papa. Darsh thought about that for a moment and then let out a great roaring yawn. We should, but tomorrow. I'm too sleepy now. Navya felt her own eyes growing heavy. Strange, she had been wide awake just a minute ago. Darsh crawled into bed and started snoring almost immediately. Navya crawled in beside him and pulled the blankets up with the last of her energy. Must be fairy magic, she murmured, and then she too fell into a deep and pleasant sleep. The next morning, the two told their parents about the fairy. They even showed them the books, but their parents only smiled. I'm sure those were just a gift from someone at the party. How very nice, Mommy said. All this talk of fairies. Dreams is more likely. It's too bad whoever gave you these didn't leave their names so you could write them a thank you card, said Papa. There really was a fairy, said Navya. I swear, Papa, she popped into the room and flew on little wings and left these books for us. They're a gift from Father Time. Good, said Papa. Then you can both write Father Time a thank you card. 
and that was the end of the conversation. Darsh and Navya brought the books upstairs, put them on their bookshelf, and went on with their day. Navya found herself doubting that the fairy had ever come at all. Maybe they had been dreaming. They had been up awfully late. The next day, winter break was over, and they went back to school. The fairy book sat on the shelf, largely forgotten. Darsh tried to color in his once, but the crayons wouldn't leave any marks. Navia tried flipping through hers, but the pages seemed strangely stuck together. She tried to get them apart, but nothing seemed to work, and she eventually gave up. It wasn't until a year later, on New Year's Eve, that they learned the purpose of the mysterious fairy books. Like the year before, they were laying in their parents' bed, listening to the party going on downstairs, when, sudden as a breeze, the fairy popped into the room, once again appearing from thin air. Hello, children! I've come to collect your books for father time! Fairy! squealed Navia, who had secretly been hoping for her return. Darsh, who didn't fall off the bed this time, jumped up eagerly. Hey, fairy, those magic books you gave us were blank, and we couldn't even write on them. I hope you're here to fix them. The fairy laughed. It sounded happy as the little wind chime hanging on their front stoop. The books were blank, but are they still? She asked. The pair looked at each other and then rushed to their bookcase in the other room and tore the books from the shelves. This time, when they opened them, the pages were all awash with colors. Navia couldn't believe it. One page had a beautiful sunset in molten shades of gold. Another had a lovely white flower, petals so real she could almost smell them. A third page had a rainbow done in soft pastels, but there was a black scuff smearing one side. They kept turning pages, seeing more beauty, but many pages also had smears or scuffs or ugly, jagged lines. Finally, Darsh looked up from his book. Who did this? Did you do this? Every page was blank and now it's full. Would you like me to explain? Yes, please, said Navya. Darsh, that picture of the singing bird is from when you shared your dessert with your sister. Navya, that rainbow is when you saw your mommy was having a bad day and cleaned the kitchen for her. But what about that ugly smear? Ah, said the fairy sadly. That came from later in the day when you lied about having finished your homework. You see, each page is a day from the year. The beautiful pages are all the good you've done, and the scuffs and smears and other marks are from when you were mean or dishonest. But they ruin the pictures, said Darsh. Can't we fix them? The fairy shook her head. These are for the past year, and they must now be returned to Father Time's bookshelf, for you can never change the past. But don't be sad, because I've brought you both a new book full of days. Perhaps, if you try, you can make this year more beautiful than the last. Then, with another tinkling laugh, she disappeared, and the old books disappeared with her. However, when they looked down, Darsh and Navya found two new books in their laps, each full of clean, blank pages to fill. And on the back of each book, written in letters of gold, it said, For the New Year. They looked at each other, wide smiles creeping across their faces, happy for the fresh start, and promising to make this year the most beautiful year ever. The End Thanks for listening!